Hi, this is Tam with the Scope with your solar storm forecast for the week of July 29th. I'm going to begin this forecast with a very sobering statistic. Of the 7 billion people on this planet, over 6 billion of these people have access to cell phones, while only 4.5 billion have access to toilets. Now, by a statistical study done earlier this year by ITU, over 6.8 billion people have cell phone subscriptions, and in developed nations, cell phone subscriptions outnumber people by nearly a third. And what do we do with these cell phones? Well, absolutely everything. We access our social media and our entertainment. We do our banking online. We look at news and sports and weather and travel. And the list is growing every day. Now the prediction is, by 2016, the number of smartphones on the market is going to more than double. And the number of tablets that are going to be circulating around will be more than quadruple. So what does this mean for global data traffic growth over the coming years? Well, it means it's growing exponentially. According to Cisco, there will be 10 billion cell phones in the marketplace by the year 2016. And that means smartphone traffic is going to increase by 50 times what it is today. Now, if those statistics don't frighten you, how about this? If you add up all the amount of data that was transferred during 2011 for the entire year, that will be less than one month of data transferred in 2016. That's how fast all of this is growing. But how do we handle all that extra traffic? With more satellites. The more traffic we have, the more satellites we need. But satellites and the precious cargo they carry, the information that rides on their signals, our information, our precious photos, our digital identities, these are all susceptible to space weather. And that brings me to my latest forecast. So here's the solar disk over the past week. If you ignore the calibration maneuvers, you can see there was quite a bit of activity on the limbs of the disk, but not really much was Earth directed. We did get high speed solar wind hitting Earth right around the 25th, and you can see from a looking at our stoplight chart, this is the KP index. It was pretty green, but it did hit late on the 25th. You see the yellow, which means unsettled conditions, but it didn't quite reach the red, which is storm level. Now here you can actually see when the impulse hit, it rattled our shield a little bit, causing some aurora that lasted for more than a day, it was seen uh, in high latitudes. And I'd like to thank my ham radio operators for reporting in, especially Don, Edward, uh, Michael, and my two marks for letting me know that situations are a bit underwhelming as of late. Now despite there was unsettled conditions and not a real storm, we still did get aurora clear down into Michigan. This is a beautiful aurora image from Bob Konzimus that he shared with us. And then of course up in James Bay, Canada, we have Michelle Tournay sent us a gorgeous picture. And you can see this and others on spaceweather.com. Now what does the sun have in store for us this week? Well these are charts that show all of the active regions on the sun. And the east and west limb bracket the earth field of view. And all these circled regions are new active regions that will be rotating into the Earth view over the course of this week. Now all of these spots seem to be stable thus far. The only real unstable one we've had is region 1800. And as we switch to the HMI magnetograms, you can see 1800s clearly rotating off now to the west side. We're almost done with it. But before it rotates completely away, it did give us a beautiful ejection. And now when we switch to 131 angstroms, you can see that beautiful chromal mass ejection right there. To replay in 304 angstroms, you can see all of the plasma that erupted, which really wasn't that much. There's the flare information right there. You can see it was a long duration, but it really wasn't that strong. And now when we switch to coronagraphs, you can see right here, boom, there goes the beautiful southern prominence ejection. Now I'm going to freeze the image. Now this is when the eruption occurred. So now you should see past that prominence something coming out and you don't. So was there an ejection that went earthward or was it all trapped back on the sun? I don't know. So what does this mean for us? Well it means that I'm going to be watching the solar wind very closely on the 30th to the 31st to see if we might have an earthward directed solar storm because that would cause issues for your Wi-Fi, your cell phones, your GPS, things like that. Now one other thing I'd like to mention is this coronal hole that's just beginning to rotate into view in the north. This will probably bring us some fast solar wind and maybe unsettled conditions by the end of this week, maybe into early of the next. So your space weather for this upcoming week may be a little unsettled. I'm not predicting any major geomagnetic storms, but you may have minor disruptions in things like your Wi-Fi and your cell phones and your GPS and your traffic services and pretty much everything that we talked about at the beginning of this forecast. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.